everybody for having me here back at uh, our Rotary. I've, uh, I've spoken to you, uh, you a few times. Actually, the first time I did it was in this room in um, in uh, the end of uh, 2019 as we were launching our 2020 season. So it's lovely to be back with you all again. I also would like to acknowledge we meet today on the lands of the Ghana people and pay my respects to their elders past and present. So I'm here today to kind of a little bit of plug of next year's season, but also to say thank you. Uh, I know many of you uh, are subscribers and or have become subscribers in the past few years. And uh, this company, which uh, turned 50 last year, is kind of built on the, the, the custodianship and trust and support of all our subscribers and, uh, and people like Kay and Flavia and, and, and uh, Brenton. And it's really wonderful to have your support. So thank you. And it's been a massive year for us as well. Uh, because of that support, it's been the biggest, uh, the highest sales year in the history, 50 year history of the company, the highest subscription year in uh, 10 years and also the most touring we've done in the last 50 years too. We had a few shows on the road this year, The Goat with Claudia Carvin, about a man falling in love with, with a, a farmyard animal. Always an interesting thing to put on stage. Uh, Girls and Boys with the great Justine Clark has toured around the country as well. And uh, The Dictionary of Lost Words, uh, based on Pip Williams, the wonderful South Australian novelist's uh, uh, book, uh, had a huge, uh, hugely successful season here in Adelaide and is now at the uh, Opera House in Sydney. And we... Um, that season in Adelaide, we actually sold out the entire season before first previews. So that's the first time that's happened in the 50 year history of, of the company too. So a great South Australian author and a great South Australian playwright and Verity Lawton. So we're, we're very lucky. So I'll be doing the second book, I, I probably think it's a, such a wonderful thing as well. So so I really I really thank you for all your support uh, for, for such, a, such a great year. Uh, in season 2024, it's funny when you're putting a season together, you don't really, we, we seek to do new Australian works, new South Australian works, lots of new international works and classics as well. But uh, something that evolved during during putting this season together was that many of them seemed to relate to the ocean and to the sea. Some, some of the shows are set on the sea, some uh, involve great journeys across the sea. So we've called it Season 2024. Uh, and you know, which we had, had a lot of fun with. So it's been a, a great, uh, joy to put this season together and we perform uh, at the Adelaide Festival Centre and across other venues around Adelaide too. So I'll give you a little little uh, look into what we're doing in 2024. Uh, if I can get this right, let's see, there we go. The first one is a great a, a British play called The Children by Lucy, Lucy Kirkwood. A bit like um, there's a kind of Chernobyl, Fukushima-like disaster on the, uh, on the English, uh, English coast and these three retired nuclear physicists have to deal, deal with the problem. So, the Hazel and Robin are married, the two, the great uh, South Australian actors Terry Crawford and Genevieve Moy, and Tina Bursell is the, um, uh, has had an affair with, with Robin previously, and they, she rocks up to tell them we have to go back into the plant to fix this problem. It's, it's about a, a kind of responsibility of one generation for the, for the generation that follows. Here's a, uh, you might know Tina from many great Australian TV shows, and um, Doctor Doctor. Here's a little, uh, Oh, there we go, and that's our wonderful cast there. And here's a little video from her. She's much prettier than I am. <laughs> oh, and moving on from Tina, let's see what we can do. Actually, Tina and I at this photo shoot were, um, is that back on the children? Um, I might have to defer to Milos to help me here for a second. Oh, there we go. Uh, at the photo shoot, we were actually discussing, Zing was saying to me before, break a leg for your speech today. And I was saying, uh, break a leg is an American and English term, but you never say good luck in the theatre. Uh, in the Europeans say imboca lupa, which means into the, into the mouth of the wolf. In France, they say merde, which I think some of you might know what that means. 
But in uh, Australia, and we were discussing this actually at the launch with Tina, you say chookers in Australia, which means uh, if you're going to have chookers. And apparently Tina was telling me it comes from if you did a good performance, you'd end up with a roast chook at the end of the night. So, uh, so I got fish and chips today, so hopefully, you know, maybe you can say fishy to me in, in future. Um, our next play is a beautiful um, one-man show that was at the hit of the Sydney Festival last year called Blue by Thomas Wetherill. And if you've got young children or grandchildren, you'll know he's the breakout star of Heartbreak High. It's a wonderful play about a rites of passage play about a young First Nations man and directed by one of the associate artists at uh, Bangara Theatre, the wonderful Deborah Brown. And here's a little message from her. Or is it? The wonderful Deborah Brown. Out of sync there, but hopefully not on the night. Uh, our next show is our wonderful education show called Symphony of the Bicycle, which is uh, by a wonderful local uh, comedian clown called Hugh Parham, and we're doing this in association with Brink Productions. Uh, it's about uh, Hugh himself and uh, a kind of middle age, mid midlife crisis situation, but it also tells the tale of Gino Bartali, the famous um, uh, um, Tour de France uh, uh, bicyclist as well. A really funny, beautiful, beautiful show uh, for youth audiences and for old audiences. That's in uh, there. Our next show, in um, we're collaborating with State Opera South Australia for the first time in nearly 15 years on Candide, Leonard Bernstein's uh, masterpiece operetta based on Voltaire's book about uh, optimism in a very challenged world, which uh, remains resonant as ever. And we've got a, a, a cavalcade of stars in this one, inclu including the great Caroline O'Connor, Alex Lewis there playing Candide, and Adelaide's own international accordion playing superstar, Hans. And here's a, hopefully it's not out of sync, here's a little message from Hans. Oh. The wonderful Hans there. Round of applause for Hans. Adelaide, great. <laughs> As he said, Caroline O'Connor is also starring in the show, playing a character called The Old Lady. Caroline, you would know, was famous for her role in Chicago, around the country, and also is in the original Moulin Rouge movie, and that fabulous number when they do Roxanne, uh, and the big West, West End and Broadway star as well. Here's a little message from Caroline, which I have to show because she's just so beautiful. Thank you. 
There we are, the beautiful Caroline O'Connor. She rang actually after she had sent that video and said, oh, when I was talking about my heart, I thought I was a little bit revealing there. And I said, we're keeping it in. I think it'll sell more tickets. So uh, thank you, Caroline, for that. Our next show is uh, in the Space Theatre, a wonderful new Australian musical called The Questions uh, by Van Badham, who's a, a fabulous um, columnist and author. Based on a true story that happened in Guangzhou during uh, COVID, uh, a couple met on a Tinder date through a, through a dating app. The girl rocked up at the guy's house for dinner. She wasn't very into it and was about to leave when both of them on their phones got a message to say, shelter in place, you need to lock down wherever you are now. And she had to stay at this gentleman's house for three days. Uh, so we've taken that as inspiration and extended it to a month. And she, uh, so it's, it's some kind of lockdown uh, set in some, some metropolis somewhere. And, uh, and these two very unlikely and very different uh, people eventually fall in love. It's a really beautiful kind of, uh, kind of Bert Bacharach meets Stephen Sondheim kind of musical, very funny and a kind of really interesting way of looking at COVID and, and dating in the modern age. And I get to direct this one with Charles Wu, who's also in Doctor Doctor with Tina, who's a, a wonderful, wonderful performer. Uh, after that, we have Justine Clark returning to State Theatre to play a very famous uh, Adelaidean, uh, Julia Gillard, the former Prime Minister, uh, in a play called Julia by Joanna Murray-Smith. And it looks at her uh, early years uh, at a Mitcham Demonstration School and then Unley High and then the University of Adelaide before she became the, the Prime Minister of Australia. And it uses the misogyny speech as a kind of beginning for, for an investigation of her life and a, a look at Australian politics in general. It's a really, really wonderful show. And Justine, some of you might have seen in Girls and Boys here a couple of years ago and also the great star of Play School. So we're thrilled to have her, her back at the company, um, which is deeply, deeply exciting. Here's a little, little message from her. The wonderful Justine Clark, yeah. Uh, uh, she looks fabulous in that wig too. She doesn't wear it for the whole show, but once it's on, you're like, wow, man, Julie Gillard right there. And hopefully we can get uh, Ms. Gillard along to it also. Uh, following that 
the actual Dunstan Playhouse turns 50 years old next year. And in the very first season at the Dunstan Playhouse, the former artistic director of State Theatre, George Ogilvie, commissioned a young playwright to write a show, which became a, a classic of the Australian canon called The Department. And that play, playwright was David Williamson. And we're thrilled that 50 years since uh, the Playhouse was built, David Williamson's returning to the company. He's been here many times in, in the meantime. But uh, he's written what he said is his final play ever, and we're doing it. Mind you, he says this every couple of years. He's the, the Dame Nellie, Nellie Melba of Australian theatre. And it's a wonderful play called The Puzzle, which is set on a cruise, which is, um, you might, some of you might know this. Nowadays, they have these, what's known as lifestyle cruises, where uh, various uh, married couples go on board to explore different sides of their sexuality and, you know, perhaps other partners as well. In this particular play, Eric Thompson, the great Eric Thompson from Pack to the Rafters and Aftertaste, is playing a father who's taking his daughter on the cruise. He thinks it's an art cruise to look at the famous, <laughs> the famous artworks of Europe and is soon, uh, f soon discovers that he's very mistaken. It's a really, really funny look at fidelity and marriage and uh, second chances and deep, deeply funny classic David Williamson affair. Uh, and here's a little message from David. The great Dave Williamson and his knees. <laughs> um, our final show for the year is a wonderful show. It's an adaptation of a great uh, Miles Franklin award-winning Peter Carey novel called Jack Mags. This fantastic book by Peter Carey is much, has much beloved and much acclaimed across the planet, and it's been adapted by a great South Australian playwright, Sam Adamson, and sees the return of Geordie Brookman, the former AD of the company, to direct it, starring uh, a great Adelaide cast, including Mark Saturno there, uh, James Smith and Jackie Phillips, who was, um, has been acting with the company for the last 40 years. And it's a kind of reworking of, of Charles Dickens' Great Expectations, where Magwitch returns from Australia looking, looking for Pip, and it's a kind of subversion of that. So think Nicholas Nickleby, think Sherlock Holmes, a kind of uh, very dark look into uh, the Lon underbelly of London. So that's, that's our season for 2024, and here's a little sizzle reel of the whole thing for you. There you go, season 2024. <laughs> Thank you.
Um, thanks so much for having me. As, as I say, um, the, our subscriber base is the reason we can keep going. It's, it's, uh, we, it's the kind of community around this company that makes it it's such, a, such a joy to be a part of. So I really thank those of you who are involved. And if you'd like to subscribe, there's brochures on the table or are out on the uh, front desk. And uh, my thanks to Rotary for supporting the company so beautifully every year as well. And thanks to Kay, who's <laughs> one of our favourite gold subscribers, I have to say. Kay Dowling, big round of applause. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, I have a question about like theatre in South Australia. Like in a sense, if a young South Australian actually wants to get into the theatre in any of the different kind of like roles or mm. what you want, like acting or writing and so on, like is this something that like that there's actually an infrastructure here to bring them through, or is it like the, they have to go away and then make their mark and then at some point ten years later they come back? I think it's a, there's a great infrastructure here. We've we've got a quite a big education department, so we do a lot of workshops and a lot of kind of pathways programs for young students who can and from which I've often you know I'm like oh steal that one and put them in a show, and there's some great. Um, uh, drama training courses here at Flinders University, AC Arts, and now the Elder Conservatorium as part of the Uni of Adelaide. There's a great music theatre course, and actually many of, uh, of the students from the Elder Conservatorium music theatre course will be in Candide as well next year. So, so there's no reason for a young performer to, you know, there's great opportunities in the rest of the country, but there's so much great opportunity here, uh, both through state theatre company and a state a state opera, South Australia. So. So it's very important to us to kind of um, empower those young people to know that they can make great lives in the performing arts and, and the cultural sector here as well. So tell them to stay. I want them for my shows. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mitchell. I just want to, what's, the, what's it like when you're both uh, directing and acting at the same time? I haven't done it for quite a while, so uh, <laughs> we'll see. I'm actually co-directing Candide with a great lady called Amy Campbell. So I'm playing Voltaire and Pangloss in, in Candide, so I, I'll be at the lectern mostly and the others have to do the fun stuff. But uh, I imagine I'll be running from, you know, the, the auditorium back onto stage. But um, but it, we're, we're so lucky. We've got, we're about 30 full-time staff at State Theatre Company. It's a really great team, so I know I'll be... Whatever happens, whatever I bugger up, I know they'll fi fix it and make me look good. So that's great. <laughs> Um, yeah, I love going to theatres. Um, one of the things that always amazes me is sort of the acting and everything is, is the set. And I said that you know, we were saw the last time. Um, but yeah, oh sorry, I've got a bit. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the set designs and how that all happens, or, or is that in house? And mm, yeah, we've you? we've got a one of the most established um, uh, theatre set making workshops in the country. We had a gent retire last year after forty seven years of service, Johnny Meyer, who's uh, one of the funniest people I know, and uh, some of the other uh, people there have been there for over thirty years as well. So there's we've got carpenters, metal workers, three wardrobe uh, people. We've got two scenic artists who paint everything and texture all the different walls and whatnot. Uh, and it's a, it's really interesting. We're we're out at Wigan Sun at Theberton, the old uh, envelope factory. That's where we're currently housed to to build all our sets. So if anyone ever feels like a visit to come and have a look at how we make the sets, let let Kay know. We, yeah, it's re a really uh, a lot of possums there as well who you know really want to break into theatre. Uh, so uh, but it's it's a really a wonderful workshop, and we're we're so pleased to have such great artisans working for the company. So. Fellowship groups here, so they might be able to oh, organise that. Please, that'd be awesome. Yeah, great. Thanks so much, everybody. Any other, any oh, one more. Yes. One more <laughs> Just a question about the programs. Yeah. I often find them disappointing. Oh, that's They shame. don't suggest. They don't give me the sort of background that you've just given today. Oh, you mean the actual physical programs? Yes. Oh, okay. If I great. can compare with independent theatre company. Yes. Where Rob always has a wonderful reflection. On the research that went into the program, right? Yeah, we well, well, we we actually last year we upped it a little bit for some some of the larger shows like the Normal Heart and Dictionary of Lost Words. But uh, I'll take take that on board and and I'll yeah, get the I team to it, write more in there. So it would be an improvement. Yeah, I mean. but I must say, like my hats off to Rob too. Rob Crozer does such a great job with the Independent Theatre Company. We're we're great colleagues, and I love what he does also. So so wonderful sector. Thank you. Cheers. Just, just before you go, <laughs> in thanking you, we've. Um, giving you two books, oh, great. one called uh, 100 Not Out and the other the, the Centenary of Writing because it's our centenary year oh, this thank year. You. And uh, so all proceeds from today will go directly to Rotary Community Projects um, and your help, your presentation helps with this. I'd also like to say, it's a pretty pro 
pro, uh, 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 on if, to Rob's not the test match dinner. State Theatre is giving two tickets to the uh, silent auction. So if you want to bid for a, two double passes, and they're worth one hundred and seventy or one hundred and ninety dollars each. So not the test match dinner. <laughs> See you there. Thank you, Mitchell. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.